I don't think this should be a huge surprise. It's not like when you get off early from work, your boss decided to cut you loose about 30 minutes early and you go home. Sounds like somebody's jumping on a trampoline upstairs. Then you find out your wife's getting blown out by your best friend. I'm very angry right now. You can tell by the tone of my voice I'm angry. I'm pissed off. Nick Merckx has been grinding Tony Hawk Apex Legends here recently. He still plays Warzone with the boys every now and again, but primarily his main game as of recent has been Apex Legends, and he's now proclaiming that he wants to go pro. We're going to talk about Nick's informal statement to his stream saying he would like to go pro. Then we're also going to talk a little bit about the mentality of the audience or viewership of live streams. Let's get it. Party Stallions, welcome to the Gamer Heaven. I am your host, AK40 Kevin. I'm gonna play a little clip or snippet here, if you will, that will be linked in the description below of Nick Merck saying on stream that he would like to go pro. You know, I wanna keep climbing the ranks of Predator and then I wanna get to a point where we're very comfortable, me, Deeds, and whoever we pick up as a trio uh, before late February. And then I wanna go for Apex Pro. You know what I mean? That's what I want to do now, but we, we might get to January and that might change. I have no idea. It probably won't. That's really what I want to do. So like I alluded to during the intro, this really shouldn't be a surprise considering he is a well above average player. And some people might say, well, he's only a good player for controller. You got to caveat it with that. He's a good controller player, but you stack him against PC players and you be getting his tits slapped back. He plays with keyboard and mouse PC players. He's a PC controller player. When you're playing ranked, generally, it's not going to be too many console players. It's either usually going to be people on PC with a controller or PC with a mouse and keyboard. He's a good player, good enough to go pro, I would say. From watching a lot of his streams, the way that he handles situations, his positioning, his communication, the way he uses the abilities of his legend, you know, utilizing audio cues, positioning on the map, and of course, his accuracy, which you can be like, well, that's just controller aim assist. Well, it's not auto aim. It's not lock on. It's not aimbot. Controller aim assist is there because inherently keyboard and mouse players are at a savage advantage because they have six to eight inches of mouse space. As with the controller, you have about three quarters of an inch. This isn't, a, I'm not going to get into the whole debate of controller and keyboard and mouse. I have extensive experience researching and playing first person shooters while using a keyboard and mouse and controller. And I can definitely say that aim assist is overpowered in certain games, but it needs to exist in some capacity to level the playing field. Anyway, moving on from that, I did have a feeling that Nick was eventually going to get sick of just grinding ranked for the, for the sheer gamer pleasure of it. And eventually he would want to monetize that by going pro professional entering tournaments and whatnot. He did mention that he is going to need a third. So if any of you guys are kick-ass Apex players, I can write him for you if you want. We're pen pals. He lives, uh, he lives a few hours away in Tampa. Now I'm going to play another little clip here where he explains to his audience, his viewership, the uh, M fam, as he calls them, just like I call you guys the Stallions and Stallionettes. You know, Tim's got the Tatman army. We've all got something clever we call our community. You can't just be like, hey, fuckers, what do you want to see today? Nope. Oh, oh that one out but here's a little clip of nick explaining why he's flip-flopping between games and what he wants to do i switched to apex everybody's mad at me but the only reason i'm bringing it up now is because we're going back to play cod again and i don't want uh you guys to get a weird impression or idea over what the we're doing that's an issue that we have seen more and more as time has gone on and as streaming and watching streamers has become more and more common where the audience feels almost entitled to deciding what you get to play and if you're not getting massive views then you shouldn't be streaming that game so i think this is an important clip to analyze here just grease it up and analyze it uh, esports talk had a pretty good take that a lot of times the audience or viewership they're entitled to dictate what the streamer played uh, unfortunately that kind of is the case because a lot of times your viewership will dip off and that's kind of when you separate people that are only watching you because you play a specific game or you're on a specific platform for example when you have a platform change from youtube to facebook or facebook to twitch or twitch to well mixer's dead but something like that, or you say, hey, I can't play Fortnite anymore. It's just not fun for me. I'm going to start playing PUBG or something like that. And, and half your viewership dips off. That's just something that you're, you have to accept as a content creator. Now, that isn't always a problem. If you are what's called a variety streamer, you're somebody that people literally tune in to see you play some random $3 Steam game every day or just some random shit that you want to play. Like I might dig into my retro console collection and be like, today we're playing Zelda, boys. Today we're going to see if Princess Zelda is going to polish Link's sword or hey, we're going to uh, play some Mario 64 and take a look at Peach's Peach or something like that. If you're entertaining or funny or attractive or, uh, you know, you got a unique flair about you, maybe the way your hair tosses on your forehead or something, just something that people resonate with and want to see. It's really not going to matter what you're playing because people are tuning in, whether it's a live stream or a, a VOD video on demand. 
to watch you. Um, I do feel like Nick definitely has that. He has built a solid community. For one, he's got a lot of time in the game. He's been a streamer for a long time and he has a very loyal community. In fact, how loyal? He actually holds the record right now or the top position for most tier three subs. Not most subs, but most uh, high tier, high ticket subs on Twitch. But that's just something for you stallions to make note of if you are starting a YouTube channel or maybe you're going to be doing some uh, some or maybe you're going to be doing some live streaming is that when you do uh, change platforms or games, you might watch your viewership dip a little bit on the analytics on the chart. And that's to be accepted. But eventually you will build a solid community behind you personally. You could be tying a baloney bow tie or showing your chocolate starfish and people are going to want to watch because they enjoy you. They resonate with you. By the way, this isn't self-inflicted. My dog has uh, nails that are like razor blades but she's a princess and when you're royalty you can do whatever the fuck you want so just a quick little video i wanted to let you guys know hey nick is planning to go pro on apex legends i mean i saw this from a mile a mile and a half down the road two kilometers if you stallions enjoyed this short video liking it will help it to get seen by more gamers this information will reach in a system as well subscribe for more content like this i cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and youtubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews keyboards mice headsets controllers etc and i'll see you tomorrow peace